So let's dive right in. We start with David from Hot Springs. David writes, my mother has an IRA with stock in Nike and Citigroup. She would like to get the money to her church. But which way is more beneficial? Gift it to the church or sell it, get taxes taken out, and then give it to the church? Well, there is a third way here, David, and we're going to get into that. But I think the the first uh, deciding point on whether to sell it or not comes from the standpoint of, well, what does the church want or need? Yeah, I think so, Scott, because few churches around anywhere are set up to manage investments. If you give them stock, uh, they might just hang on to it in a, some type of brokerage account, and then they would sell it at some point in time, and they wouldn't get taxed on, on the game because they're a nonprofit organization. But church, typically, when they get gifts like this, if they get stock, they just go ahead and sell it and use the money. So I think the, the question, the first question should be, okay, uh, what is uh, the desire of the church in terms of receiving this gift? And then secondly, is there any kind of issue with them hanging on to that stock and and if they wanted to? Yeah. And of course, the second part of that question, John, is David's asking, should they sell it, get taxes taken out and then give it to the church? Of course, the taxes would not come out if you uh, at the at the point of trade. Right. Because this is in an IRA. So the taxes is only when it's withdrawn from the IRA. But we don't know how old your mother is, David, but if she is 70 and a half or older, she can actually send that money directly to the church without having any taxes taken out or without any taxes due through something called a qualified charitable distribution. We mentioned at the top of the show, QCD is the acronym for that. And if she is 70 and a half or above, which used to be the RMD age, when they raised the RMD age, they did not raise the QCD eligibility age. So it's still 70 and a half. And you can actually withdraw and send to a qualified charitable uh, institution up to $105,000 annually. And that number goes up. It's indexed for inflation. So, John, this is a great way to be able to be charitable, but be able to give more because you don't have to worry about the taxation. You're right, Scott. And in this situation, uh, David doesn't tell us how much of the stocks that she owns. So if the uh, stock value is over $105,000, she could split it and do part of it in one year and, and the rest in the next year, or however that needs to play out in terms of the value. But the real key here is that any distribution up to that $105,000 per year is excluded from your mom's taxable income. So it just transfers to the church. It's like it didn't even happen as far as the IRS is concerned uh, when you make a qualified charitable distribution. Now, uh, you need to be sure that whoever is the custodian of the stocks, whoever the wherever those are held in account uh, with the company that is taking care of those, they need to be sure to flag that distribution as a qualified charitable distribution. Otherwise, it's going to look like any other uh, distribution of an IRA, and they will send a 1099 out for it. So uh, there's a real nuance there that you have to work with whoever the custodian is of those assets to be sure, Scott, that it is transferred to the church in the proper way. Yeah, we we do this for lots of our clients who are eligible for QCDs. Uh, they are charitable minded, and we the, the key here is is you don't want it to hit your bank account. It's got to go directly to the institution, so the check is sent to the church. And I, I would say too to David again, we don't know how old your mom is, but we we do know that if she's not seventy and a half, but she's close to seventy and a half, it would also probably be wise to just hang on and wait a few years. If she's sixty eight, sixty seven in that range, um, because obviously she's going to be able to take advantage of it once she reaches seventy and a half and be able to give more. So maybe she could work out a a, a pledge to the church for a future date in that case. And then the other part of it too is is she uh, David tells us that the the, the uh, stock is in an IRA and that's key here too because it does not uh, it is not eligible for a QCD if it is still in a 401k. So for other people listening and hearing about this because that's what we 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 get these questions and we we know that people are listening to them and applying them to their own situation. I think that's a key thing to point out too John is that you can't do that from a 401k. You're right Scott and and really often here at Gen Wealth we will sit down with folks who are in the age range that they qualify for a QCD and we'll ask them about their giving to the church on a regular basis. Yep. 
And so when we actually do that, you know, this gets into the complexities of the, of the tax law. But, uh, you know, if you can't itemize your deductions, then it really doesn't matter what you're giving to the church if it's below your, your standard deduction. So if you want to give to the church and exclude that money from your taxable income, you can gift it uh, one time in a year and, and just give that for your tithe and your offering or what, however you do it. Uh, you can actually use the QCD to take the place of your tithe and offering. So the church still gets the same amount of money. They might actually get a little bit more money because yep. you're not having to pay taxes on that money yeah. Uh, in order to generate it, and you get the tax benefit of it being excluded from your taxable income. Yeah, I think that's a great point because when you think about, let's say if you give a hundred dollars a month to your church, and you are receiving distributions from your assets, social security, all of that, and everything that you're receiving is taxable. Then, in general, let's say you're in a twenty percent uh, effective tax rate, you may have to actually withdraw a hundred and twenty dollars to be able to get close to that $100 deposited into your bank account and then sent on to the church. But if you sent the if you sent the $120 directly to the institution, then you're not actually being taxed on the money. So in that instance, the church would actually get $20 more. I'm really impressed you did all of that on the fly right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not exact. It's around, right? Yes, but I mean, around. I try to keep the math simple. Lots of zeros in it for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. But I think that uh, to, Dave, to David's question, I think if you're looking to gift money from an IRA, I think a QCD is a great way to do that to maximize the amount of money you're going to be able to give to the church. But again, just know it can't be done from a 401k has to be an IRA, and you have to be 70 and a half or older. I would also say to David and his mom, if you need some direction or help with this, we have an office in Hot Springs that can help you with that. Just reach out to us here at GenWealth, and we'd be glad to uh, help you work through the details of that QCD. And David, we're going to ask you to send us an email anyway, because we're going to name your question the question of the week. We thank you for reaching out. We'd love to send you a free Get Ready for the Future show Tumblr for sending that question in, and we're going to ask that you email us, show at getreadyforthefuture.com to claim that prize. And if you have a question, you can send them in through that email address or call us at 501-381-5228. You can leave a voicemail. We'll play that on the air, or you can just text to that number as well, and we can get your question on the air and answered on the Get Ready for the Future show.